Okay, hi Alan. Uh, obviously, thank you very much for being with us tonight um, for the Budhaven uh, Sports Awards evening. Yeah, you know, firstly, I just want to say, you know, it's a shame that we're we're all not there in person. But uh, I'm extremely honoured that you've asked me to um, give my thoughts and experiences as a player and as a coach. And I hope that goes some way to helping the, the students, um, you know, at Butte. So I uh, just want to say thank you again for, for inviting me. And obviously, you know, you're, you're now, you make, you made that transition, it's a very successful one from from a high level rugby player in, into high level coach and as joint head coach of Cornwall's most successful professional sports team, the Cornish Pirates. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, originally I'm from, from Yorkshire uh, and I sort of moved to the West Country when I was about 20, played for Plymouth and then for the last, I think it's 18 or 19 years, I've been at Penzance, which is hell of a shift, I think. Um, <laughs> That's a good shift. And, and enjoyed every rainy winter that's gone with it. Um, but over that time, you know, um, I've been proud of the the achievements that I've, I've, I've made over, with the club. That's over 300 games I've played, uh, 300 senior games, wow. which uh, has taken its toll on the body. But it's uh, it took me a number of pre-seasons to get there. And along the way, also, you know, the honours of uh, being selected for the uh, championship uh, 15, where I got to play against the New Zealand Maoris, um, you know, and that and that was a really special moment. Also, with the BNI Cup, um, playing Munster in the final, and we we managed to to uh, sneak that game, and that was a you know a, a, a massive moment, not only just for myself but also for the club. Um, years before that, you know, we beat Exeter in the EDF um, Trophy, which was another memorable one. So that was at Twickenham as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a, a fantastic day. I mean, uh, it was a real special moment, and for all the encouragement to get down and get behind us, um, you know, it was it was absolutely fantastic. Especially having those derbies, you know, and just sort of recent times, I was also sort of selected to play for the Barbarians uh, along with uh, my fellow coach Gavin Cattle, and we played um, in the Memorial game against the Forces down at Bath. So. That just gives you a little outline of probably, you know, it feels like a lot actually when I say it, but it's over an 18 year period. So, you know, I've been with the club and now transitioning over into the coaching um, sort of areas of the game. It's been, a, it's been a fantastic and sometimes very uh, challenging transition, but uh, very rewarding at the same time. And obviously, you know, as a, a professional sportsman and then moving into professional coaching, I'm sure that you've encountered a number of particularly challenging times throughout your career. When, it, when I think about the, the things that have shaped me as a, as, a, as a person, as a player, as a coach, there's three sort of moments that really stand out to me. And there were, there were very big learning moments. The hardest one was I had an injury, repeat injury. So over the space of two seasons, I was unable to play consistently on the pitch and um, and it caused me quite a lot of psychological issues because there was a time where I thought if I get injured one more time I'm going to have to retire and what am I going to do next and it became this huge mental issue with me. So I was running around uh, really with the thought of you know if you break your arm again you know that's the end of it. That was a moment that I, I learned a lot about myself because I almost had to find my own solution to this negative spiral I was in. I had to find a way to try and bring my mind back into the game without the worry around what happens if. And what that taught me was players who have to deal with injury and especially big injury there is a huge psychological factor that goes with it but you can overcome these factors and you can and you can carry on and have very successful careers you know and with the surgeries out there now it's very rare that someone has to give up um, it's just a sometimes quite a lengthy process so that was one very challenging aspect probably the most challenging the other one was very late into my career, when I was about 33, I decided to change position. Uh, for those who know rugby, it was um, from loose head to tight head. So it's quite a, even though people think a prop is a 
plot is quite a significant change. And again, I had to deal with not only the psychological aspects of the negative talk in and around that decision, you know, you're too old, you're too small, it's going to be too hard to do, you, you know. Um, and I used that energy in the most productive way possible, which was, you know, I'll show you and, you know, and I, and I took a, a very um, methodical uh, approach to it. It was about repetitions, understanding how to break down maybe uh, some of the world's best scrummages and, and understand how they do it. What did they do differently to me? Um, and again, that went into, again, we talk about resilience. Both of those required an enormous amount of resilience because it was a lengthy process. It wasn't something that I could, you know, just suddenly turn on like a light. It, both of the injury and the change of position required a very methodical process and whilst that was happening i had to deal with all of the negative aspects that go along with that and then just recently in this you know gavin cattle as a coach can can vouch for this you know imagine your first year in in coaching and you lose your first 10 games you've got to show your metal do you continue to walk the path which you know is to be right or do you change direction and lose faith in what you're doing? And at that point, again, the resilience to say as a, as a group, as a club, no, we're doing the right thing. And actually off the back of that 10 game loss, we went on a 10 game winning streak. And we never saw that coming, let me tell you, you know, so that has shaped the way we uh, face any kind of challenge now. We know as long as we stay methodical, stay on the path that, you know, you will get what you what you sow. So I think as long as you, you have a plan, you stick together, you're methodical in your process, um, I, I would say unless something extreme happens, you, you will get um, the, the outcome you desire. Have you, have you found any sort of creative ways to keep up with your skill training and skill-based stuff? Because obviously not having a training partner or something must be pretty difficult unless the players are sort of living together or that sort of thing. Well, I tell you what, it's been a, it's been funny. That's all I can say. Some of the things from throwing a tea bag in a cup to kicking a ball in a bin to watching us cook. We did like cookery things, press up challenges, uh, runs using the uh, time lapse to show different different things we just got really creative it got funny it got stupid it got repetitive and then it went back to stupid and then all good for morale all yeah good for morale really in the team environment absolutely but the biggest thing that we did was we kept contact with each other yeah and this is huge in this moment the biggest thing you can do is keep contact. If that's on the phone, if that's over Zoom, if that's talking to your neighbor over the fence, okay, if that's family, you, we need social interaction. It's great for our psyche. If you can add some humor into that, if you can add support into that, if you've got direction, you want to improve a certain skill, an aspect to your life, read a book, okay. There is so, so many things we can do what would you sort of say if, if you know, there's, there's, a, there's a potential young athlete out there or a performer or a competitor that is feeling anxious or down or feeling that they're behind or they've missed out on something? I think the first and foremost is for any athlete to realise that, you know, in a very short space of time, you're going to be running around the field again and you're going to be out of breath and it's going to be all hard work and you'll be a PE teacher shouting at you for something so um you know you enjoy your break secondly you know i say again you know build your routine think about it be your own coach if you're whatever sport you know you're in okay there'll be something that you say to yourself what separates me away from the other guy or the girl okay what separates me away it could be you know shooting at hockey it could be my throwing in as a as a rugby player you know, it could be my start as a sprinter. Okay, okay. So now you you say to yourself, well, how do I? How would I train that? What advice do I need? What equipment do I need? Where could I do it? Once you've seek that advice, 
write out your own little program, you're your own coach. And I tell you, it'll be the most powerful thing you ever do. You'd be so self-reliant. Instead of waiting for someone to tell you what to do at school, you can be proactive 10 minutes before a session. These are the times to build those core skills. And then at the same time, support each other. Maybe speak to each other about uh, how you would improve areas of your game. And if you are concerned about fitness or a skill level, well, it's as simple as you've identified it. What are you going to do about it? Just continually review. You'll know when you've gone too far. You'll know when you need to change. You'll know when you need support. And I think these are the simple things. So, you know, in a roundabouts way, I'd say build the routine, focus on the things you want, not what you don't want. Okay. And where possible, challenge and support each other. Even in the professional game, they've all got massive challenges. There's no one who's got the magic answer. The only thing you can do is put one foot in front of the other and make tomorrow better than today. Just the final thing, Anne, how, what would you say to, to congratulate all the children that are watching tonight that have been busy coming up with games and you know, tea bags in cups and all those sort of different ideas of their own creative ways to stay skillful and stay competitive? Uh, what would be your sort of parting message to, to inspire them to keep going? Stay creative, stay passionate about what you're doing and just keep moving forward and you'll get exactly what you want.